Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. A pair of tight ends will be on the field today looking to do whatever it takes to give their team an advantage. It's the Jets going up against the Raiders. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Bay Area as we welcome you to Oakland, California. The pregame festivities here in Oakland have to be seen to be believed. This crowd in silver and black, they are fired up as their Raiders get set to face off with the New York Jets. Hello again, everybody. I'm Brandon Gunn here in the booth. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And you know, Charles Larry took a moment to highlight a couple of the tight ends that we're going to see in this game. Both of these teams really look to get them involved in the offense early and often, don't they? And we continue to see in the NFL how the tight end is becoming more and more of a highlighted position. Some of these guys can flex out like wide receivers. A lot of them can come inside, block, as well as catch passes. He's exactly right. Tight end. That's a position we'll continue to follow as this game unfolds. The children will grow, and it's the final weekend of summer, but we've got the NFL, and we're underway on EA Sports. On the return, it's Jalen Marshall, and he will be marked down right there at the 20-yard line. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. They'll be led out by a guy who only became a starter relatively late in his career. It's the well-traveled veteran, Josh McCown. I think it's safe to say that their quarterback position remains unsettled, even with Josh McCown assuming the starting role. He wants to be the guy. He'll mentor other people around him. But don't underestimate his competitive instinct. He wants to be the guy to lead the Jets. carry for Matt Forte and he'll get only a couple up to the 22. The offensive starters now for the Jets. The struggles of the New York Jets offense in 2016 were well documented. They struggled to run it, struggled to throw it. A lot of that because of inconsistent quarterback play. A big reason why they ended up 26 overall in offense in the NFL and went from 10-6 in 2015 to 5-11 in 2016. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. All right, here we go. They stay on the ground. Forte again. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 10 yards is the pickup. Good enough for a Jet first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. <laughs> Throwing on first is McCown. Going to throw right side here, complete. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination, look pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. So they complete the pass and now they face a second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That's good for a Jet first down, a gain of 13. So right now what I'm seeing, I'm seeing an offense just firing off the ball a lot quicker than they can react. And not only that, they're sustaining the blocks too. I'm seeing guys get six, seven yards downfield before there's even a hint of contact. Here's McCown. And complete over the middle. Safarian Jenkins. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. A gain of six there on first. 
When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. So the offense readies for a second and four. This is Bilal Powell. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. Third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. Shotgun here for McCown. Open man is Stewart, it's complete. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Jets first down. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down, they did. Big time pickup for them, and now, I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone, because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. Forte. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. But well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Back to the ground on first, it's Forte. And able to fight forward inside the 15 to the 13. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. McCown going to hand this one off to Powell. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. I can never stump you on stats, but go ahead and let the people know. Who was second in the NFL 2016 in yards per carry? It was that man, Bilal Powell, right at five and a half. He may have had to share some carries in the backfield with Matt Forte, but boy, he took advantage of his touches. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Pressure here and taken down. A sack back at the seven. Bruce Irvin leading the surge there. He drops him for a loss of six. Well, surprise, surprise. First and goal at the one. No quarterback sneak. No running play. They decide to throw for it, but the pressure got to him quickly and put the quarterback down. And now for the offense, this is play number 11 here on this drive. On second down, Forte. A solid move on the run, but ultimately stops short of the goal line. Down at the two. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to set up a third and goal. Quickly now, the starting 11 for the Oakland defense. Well, sometimes the numbers really don't tell the full picture because Oakland was 26th in total defense in 2016. But guess what? They were tied for first in turnover margin at plus 16 with Kansas City. That makes up for a lot of other issues when you're able to take the ball away. This opening drive has taken them to the two, but now they come up on a third and goal. Snap 
throws it one. McCown. And he fires one that's intercepted. Read it well and it's picked. snagging one. You don't see that every week. No, you don't, but a lot of them are just reliving their old dreams, going back to when they were in youth football and in high school. They didn't always play defensive line. Some of them actually handled the football, and you can see the flashback when he grabbed that one. Now the Raiders offense, they get set to head back on the field. First carry for Marshawn Lynch. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Give him a first down, 15 yards that time for the Raiders. No surprise watching Marshawn Lynch scatter bodies as he runs, but I remember doing games of his at Cal. And I remember the moves, the jump cuts, the elusiveness, as well as the strength. It's lining up first and ten. From the gun, it's Carr. And complete right side to Cook. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Solid gain of 18 and a Raider first down. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one, and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. comes to the line now first and ten first down the run with Lynch and he'll get this down only to about the 46 two yards on the pickup there it'll be second and eight that's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Carr gives to Lynch on the draw. And down inside the 40 to about the 38. Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down at about the length of the football. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? But you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field and they're only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass him with a running play. They fake the handoff. Now Carr. He shakes him off. Breaks a tackle. And that's complete to Walford. A pickup of 10, and it's enough for an Oakland first down. Really been an ideal start for them. They get the turnover on the opening possession. Now here they are moving the ball straight down the field on their first drive. And that feels good, but you know on their side of the field, all they're thinking is finish this drive off because they took it away, right? So now you've got them back on their heels a little bit. Now go down, put a touchdown on them. Look out, you've won the mental battle early in the game, and that may carry over for you. So the offense has it first and 10. This is Jalen Richard, and taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. 
This has been a good drive so far. It's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and ten, as you said, in the red zone. to the ground this time Lynch and power running here down to the six yard line give him nine on the carry that time and they're set up with a second and one and when you get good yardage like that on first down it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense but I love the way he's finishing those runs at the end of things he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra Second down, Lynch. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Carr going to try and throw on third down. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short. They elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short. But you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. So on fourth down, off goes Carr, and on is Sebastian Janikowski. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up. A live ball here, remember. So the next time we leave one of those coaches' meetings and, and we're walking out in the hall and you're like, how come we spend so much time talking about special teams? Here you go. This is why. This is why, right? And look, I'm, I'm right there with you. We hear it every time we meet with coaches. But it is a big part of it. And look at how early in the game this occurs. They block a kick. And not only does it set a tone, it sends a message for the rest of the game. Yeah, so much for our first points of the game. The drive begins with a run by Forte. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. Give him 12 yards there, and the Jets have a first. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. And before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. Nothing, nothing, our score. And we're back to Oakland after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon with you. It's the Jets in possession as we begin quarter number two here. And they've got it here with a first down. Again, they run. Again, it's Forte. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. 
Though they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 10 yards is the pickup, good enough for a Jet first down. The reason that counter or misdirection plays work so well is that usually you've given them a reason to think that everything's going to the direction that starts initially. You've run that type of a play throughout the game, you've given them that look, and now you're going to counter things and bring it back the other way. Almost a tendency breaker at times. And a lot of it is making sure that you have an illusion, almost like a magician. Look over here, but the play is actually happening over there, and that's where running back's vision comes into play. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Khalil Mack coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. McCown throwing on second. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. And the Raiders call on a nickel set for third down. Gun. It's McCown. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. is the second-year man from Sam Houston State, Lachlan Edwards, to punt it away. Back deep for the Raiders, Jalen Richard. <laughs> It'll be a 47-yard punt with a net of 40 following a seven-yard return. And the Raiders will take possession. The Raiders' offense now, they trot back out and be backed up to the 24. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Muhammad Wilkerson elevated a Temple program that was looking for players like him, and he's carried that on into the NFL. What a terrific play there. Yeah, a nice tackle for loss for the former Temple Al, as you said, and the 30th pick in the 2011 draft. Throwing on second down. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Check, check. 
The Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. Throwing his car on third down. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense, and it worked very well there for a first down. Took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. They decided to take a shot and right down the middle of the field, and really, they didn't give it as much time to develop, did they? They want to take that shot somewhere around the 15-yard mark. And the defense able to recover, bat it free. Second down now after the incompletion. They'll run it now out of the gun. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. They lost two there, and it's third down. I'd say the staff that's up in the booth watching the game, they may want to file that one away. See how fast the free safety closed to make that play? Might want to check into a throw the next time. The Raiders on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third down and 12. Working from the gun, it's Carr. And that is incomplete. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Six-year man Marquette King on to punt. Back deep for the Jets, Jalen Marshall. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And let's look now at Josh McCown as we focus in on our player spotlight. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it's struggle. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When, <laughs> when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground, but that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. They start on the ground with Forte. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. On the draw, McCown leaves it to Forte. And he will fight his way forward to about the 23-yard line. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort from minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. The Jets on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and seven. Here's McCown to throw. And he 
can't quite intercept it. Zone coverage, free safety was there. Couldn't come up with it, and now it's fourth down. A pretty rocky start in this game for the guy throwing the ball. Already has thrown one interception. Almost threw a second one right there. All he's doing right now is giving the defense a whole lot of confidence. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. So just a three-yard return following a punt of 45. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. And now Oakland ready to take the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? They start the drive with Lynch. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. A Raider first down, 17 yards. I love when a play results in a game that I can actually kind of fall back on one of my favorite adages, and that is anytime there's a run over 10 yards, it means that the offensive line did its job, but you know who else did? The wide receiver. Because the first seven yards kind of belong to the offensive line and the running back. Anything after that means the wide receivers did a great job of blocking downfield, being willing to mix it up, and give them some more space to gain additional yardage. Throwing on first down is Carr. He's got his man on the crossing route. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. Give him 30 yards there. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Play fake here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Darren Lee in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. That's something you see a whole lot of, a sack of Derek Carr and due in large part to a good O-line. Carr was sacked on less than 3% of his dropbacks last year, lowest in the league. Oakland knew it was important to take care of their quarterback. They picked up Donald Penn. Kalechi Osemele and Rodney Hudson in recent years, and it's paid off. On second down, here's Carr. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The Raiders on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be a tough third and 18. Shotgun now for Carr. And almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. I know ultimately that feels like a good defensive play but I know it's really not. They had a chance to keep points off the board. Now they have a chance to kick a field goal by missing that shot. Yeah, especially at this spot in the field. He's got to be upset he couldn't come up with that INT. So on fourth down, off goes Carr, and on is Sebastian Janikowski. 
He had his lone attempt blocked earlier. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And the Raiders jump out to a 3-0 advantage. So a good kick that time, and that might help to get the negative thoughts out of the mind from that earlier block. Especially since this was not a chippy, so he had to get that one out kind of low. But his line does a nice job of protecting, and he's able to convert for three. To the made field goal. Here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. And a look here now at Matt Forte. He's doing his thing. He's got some good yardage, but his team right now in the second quarter, zero points. Just not a complete formula. Half of it's there, being able to run the ball and set the tone. What if they may have to go to some play action, throw off the run game, and try and get the ball in the end zone? I was just going to ask you that same thing. Maybe you use that run now to set up the pass, right? I would think so because the run has been very effective for them. Play action here on first down. To the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it. But he is able to keep the feet in bounds. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. All right, here we go. Three, 19. Three, 19. Forte gets a handoff from McCown. And he is going to be knocked flat on his back. Oh, a big hit right at the line of scrimmage. Only a yard on the pickup. And now they've got a third down at eight. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Throwing is McCown on third down. That's complete over the middle to Stewart. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. 23 yards on the play. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen, but everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they show to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. Here's McCown. Left side complete, Safarian Jenkins. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive. It just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, we talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practice now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore.
The Jets on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and eight. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We'll come back to Oakland after this. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, we'll send you to Orlando and Larry Ridley as he'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. But no touchdowns. These guys need to give Larry some touchdowns to talk about. Things are too easy for him right now back in the studio. Come on, guys. Help the man out. Give him something to talk about. The Jets on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and eight. Working from the gun, McCown. And he's taken down, trying to do a little too much, getting outside of the pocket, and it results in a sack. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup and get set as we resume action. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on to punt for New York. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. other right away we knew that flag was coming out and I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you I don't want to throw the flag but you caused the play you did it I had to Here's Carr. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Amari Cooper, his intended receiver, and now it's second down. Well, in tapping those toes, he tried to get both inbounds. He could not do it, though. In tap dance parlance, could not complete the shuffle. All right, needed to get that shuffle down with both feet. <laughs> Not just one. Is that what they say? There it is. You know, put a little sand down on the stage. I'll take your word for it, my man. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. The reception good for seven. It's third down. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. Operating from the gun. Carr. And he finds Cook. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Halftime. 
So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So here we go, first and 10 now. Car to throw again. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Muhammad Wilkerson in there to drop him. And it'll be a loss of about eight. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Second down. And the pressure gets to him again. Sheldon Richardson. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. Carr and the Raiders following the sack, looking up at a third and long. From the gun, Carr. That's Cordero Patterson hauling it in. An incredible play there. They do get big yardage, but they're still stopped a yard or two short, and it's fourth down. Boy, they had a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big-time play for them. Nice completion, excellent game. Now they're in fourth and manageable. Just a little short, though, with that marker. So on fourth down, off goes Carr, and on is Sebastian Janikowski. And remember, he had one blocked earlier. And the 39-year-old veteran puts it right through, and that will double their lead as it's up to six. It's a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they get the field goal near the end of the first half to expand that lead. Now that's got to feel good, but they can't let up. Now on the kickoff, they've got to make sure they don't give up a big return or a big yardage to set up the other team for one last chance to score themselves. After the made field goal, here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Forte. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And it'll bring up a second and 13. So 
So a couple of field goals, that's all we've been able to muster through two quarters of play. 6-0 is our count at the break. As we send you cross country to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando with our halftime report, here's Larry Ridley. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. at the 34. Wilkerson's going to push his way to the QB here. This will go for a loss of eight. Sticking with the same drive. Richardson's going to take down the QB here. This goes for a loss of nine. So that's it for us at the EA Sports Studio. We'll go back now to Oakland for the start of the second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Out comes the Raiders offense. They'll go on offense first to start quarter number three. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt, <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. To throw its car under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Leonard Williams in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. to throw on second down. Carr. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down. Then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back. But it's a big play. They've got to hold up. The Raiders on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This will be third and forever. Operating from the gun, Carr. Letting one fly deep for Coop. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. That one will go down as 33 yards on the third down conversion. So Amari Cooper out of Northwestern High School in Miami making a nice play there. And it's so funny that when I was going through the draft process when he came out of Alabama and was inquiring about him and his skills, they say it all began back in Miami. He really became a pro receiver at a young age because of his attention to detail and precision. But don't forget his athletic ability. That's what made that catch there. And he did spend one year with Teddy Bridgewater as his quarterback there, so that helped back in high school. A 10th carry of the game for Marshawn Lynch. And there he goes again. 
And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Card out of throw. Quick throw that's complete on the inside slam. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. down and 10 now for the offensive group. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short gain. Second down following the run. From the gun, Carr. And his throw is incomplete. He was trying to get it to Michael Crabtree there. And it'll bring up third down. Boy, you will not see a quarterback of his caliber miss a one like that very often. I mean, there it is, wide open, got the shot, and he misfires. We talk about, boy, he'll want that one back all the time. <laughs> he definitely wants that one back. Get down, get down. On third down, Carr. And he's wrapped up, taken down, back at the 25. Jordan Jenkins. In there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So on fourth down, off goes Carr, and on is Sebastian Janikowski. And remember, he had one blocked earlier. And Janikowski bangs it through, and that will make our score 9 to nothing. So that one is his third of the game. Now, if you're wondering, that's only halfway to his career high, as he once had six oh, field goals. Oh, Brandon, but was six? Let's hope we don't get that again, please. Okay, can, can we see a few touchdowns here and there? That'd be nice. After the made field goal, here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Raider defense now. Here they are as they get ready to trot back onto the field. Forte, and he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. 
Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Here's Forte. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. But he was stopped on that play. But he's had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. Now they'll throw with McCown. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Anderson. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Ten yards is the pickup. Good enough for a Jet first down. set of downs here. This is the running back power. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. Here we go now. Blue Another run, this time Forte. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. He's been terrific so far. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. ready to take the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, 
that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah. Run what Put you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. A lot of contact there, but there was no way it appeared that he was going to get a flag on that one. Looking for it, but he wasn't going to get it. And as an ex-defensive back, you love it when they let you play and jostle downfield. So second and ten here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. That one will go as a gain of 11. Raiders having a first down as well. Really good, skillful, tough running throughout this contest. Picked up first down after first down. He's got to have a nickname, doesn't he? How about the human first down machine? I think that fits. down. Carr caught left side to Crabtree. the offense lining up first and ten. From the gun, it's Carr. To the right side, he's got Cooper. It's complete. And he's brought down. Fifteen more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Steve McClendon in there to record another sack. Their sixth of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. He took a hit on that last play. Now let's see how he and the offense respond on second. Carr gives to Marshawn. And he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. Well, praise has to go to the guys on the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. to throw on third down. Carr, and this is gonna be incomplete. So on fourth down, off goes Carr, and on is Sebastian Janikowski. 
This officially a 55-yard attempt. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. So a favorable bounce that time, to say the least, and he's able to convert the field goal there from a long distance. Yeah, the guys behind the end zone didn't need to hike the net up for this one. That thing was a dying quail, but he finds a way to boink it off the crossbar and make it drop throw. to the made field goal. Here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. Gets past one man. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. A look now at the Oakland defense as they get ready. They're hoping to do what they did last time, force another punt. Last time it resulted in a field goal. We'll see if they can get another stop here, though. And the best defenses are in the business of preventing points and creating points. And that's exactly what these guys did on their last possession. Why? Because they got off the field on three and out, turned the ball over to their offense after the punt, and let them roll downfield and put the ball through the post for a field goal. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And while there is no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window. And they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. And on second and ten now. Shotgun here for McCown. Caught Safarian Jenkins right side. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. This is Forte, and a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Following the penalty, it's Forte. They'll get it inside the red zone, but only for a couple down to the 19. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. And now the offense operates in the red zone. Here we go now. Three, 19. McCown to throw on second down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Jordan Leggett, the tight end, his intended receiver. And now it's third down.
The Jets on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and eight. Now McCown. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. Khalil Mack able to disrupt yet another pass play. His third sack of the afternoon. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness that defensive line is eating them alive. So on fourth down, out comes the field goal unit for Todd Bowles. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. And Captain Zero's kick is right through. And the drive will wind up yielding three. And the attempt at three will have to come from the other end of the field as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in the East Bay. It's Jet football, but they trail here as we start the fourth quarter. Zero out now as he'll kick this one away. To return, it's DeAndre Washington. Here comes the Jets' defense as they ready themselves. And even though that last drive yielded points, it was a long field goal, so they probably weren't too upset about it. Although here, obviously, they'd like to give up zero. Of course, it has the goal each and every time out. But when, when they make that type of a field goal that long, you almost give a little nod of respect to the kicker, like, congratulations. But you do feel pretty good about not giving up anything big. Yeah, and we'll see if they can not give up anything big on this drive. down. A right side catch by Crabtree. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. That one will go as a gain of 11. Raiders having a first down as well. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. Now, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. So the offense has it first and 10. Play action. Now it's Carr. And complete right side to Cook. A good pick up there at 22. He's played a great game. It continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish because strategy would tell you run the football, run the clock down. Instead, they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done. And now a first down following that long game. Now a play fake here on first down. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. 
got to give some credit. They're able to hop up in the air and bat that one away. And that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and give him some type of a pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. Car again here on second and ten. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm, incomplete. Now it's third down. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. The Raiders on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This is third and 10. Throwing his car on third down. And that will be incomplete as well. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And this will be spotted on the other side of the field. It's a 61-yard attempt. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. So it's a rare two-miss ball game for him now. Normally one of the more dependable guys you're going to find around. Very unlike him. One of the better kickers in the NFL. And I don't think there's anything wrong with him physically or mechanically. He's just having one of those games. So out now come the Jets. And after the field goal last time, let's see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I've never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. on first is McCann. And down he goes. Brought down a Raider sack. Mario Edwards in there to record another sack. Their sixth of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game. The way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. McCown throwing on second. Got an open man. It's a noon one. Holding offense. Well, that's a good chunk of yardage. It's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books, but now they have to make that up again, don't they? Right, here we go. Boom, on second down, here's McCown. Sets up the screen to Forte. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. They could not be more opposite in build. But coming into 2017, Matt Forte pretty much neck and neck with Darren Sproles for most receptions by a running back. Yeah, both guys just over 500 into the year. The Jets on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and 17. From the gun, it's McCown. Letting one go deep for a noon walk. Incomplete. He had his hands on it, but couldn't pick. It's now fourth down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield.
Here's Lachlan Edwards now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Marshawn Lynch heading back out into the huddle. He is knocking on the door for 100 yards in this ball game. And it's so important. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Just short of it, a little bit over. A little bit over feels better to everyone. Offensive line, running back, team totals, just something magical about breaking that barrier. And he's right there on the doorstep now. Throwing on first down is Carr. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Give him a first down, 15 yards that time for the Raiders. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. First and ten, here's Carr. And he'll hit the slant route. That's caught by Cooper. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. Look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead. Clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll run with Marshawn Lynch. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Again, they'll pound it with Lynch. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. before he's taken down at the 27. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. They go play action here on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. Michael Crabtree, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Here we start looking for big-time corners. We're going to start with athleticism, but without technique, you're not going to make plays as one we just saw there. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. 
It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Cargan to throw. And this is caught. Touchdown, Raiders. Seth Roberts, 28 yards. And the Raiders add six to their lead. And when the quarterback drops and has a guy that wide open in the end zone, his eyes have to get just as big as grapefruits. Oh, without a doubt. And this is the easiest throw you're going to get. And you're going to get the benefit of a touchdown on top of it. Make that throw. Try and run it here. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. Well, partner, since this new two-point rule came into play, offenses have spent a lot more time working on it. That means the defenses are doing the exact same thing. to kick is Janikowski. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The New York set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. set up the screen that's complete and he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field so let's see about the call So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating the guys who just gave up that play. Looking for our Darius Stewart there. That'll bring up second down. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Forte. And not much there at all. He's up only to about the 16-yard line. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays.
The count now on first down. That's complete over the middle to Stewart. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Second down now after the pass completion. Now McCown. And eventually taken down here. Great coverage downfield. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So that one will be accepted. Whistles come in before the snap. Looked like one of the Jets may have moved. Full start offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. First and 15 here behind the chains. To throw is McCow. And that's complete to the right side. It's Marshall. And he'll be brought light at the 45-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical. And you figure, may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Again, it's McCown. He completes it to Peak. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That's good for a Jet first down, a gain of 13. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. So here we go, first and ten now. Up, here we go. Blue lining. Blue lining. Ah! McCown looks to throw again. It's caught by Quincy Anunwa. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. Anunwa was the Jets' second-leading receiver last year, had 58 catches, only one behind Brandon Marshall, who, of course, with the Giants now. A breakout season for him, a big-bodied guy. Many thought that he's more restricted to moving the chains, had an ability to get downfield and make big catches as well. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now whistles come in before the snap. Looked like one of the Jets may have moved. Offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Trapping the mistake by the offense, it cost him five yards, and now first and 15. Following the penalty, it's Forte, and he's going to get this one down to the 30. Defense. 
And the dreaded face mask penalty, that's going to cost him 15 yards. And it's such a dangerous play. Body going one way, and then your head gets yanked back the other. 15 yards is the right call. Fresh set of downs here. Into the red zone now, it's McCown toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was trying to find our Darius Stewart, and that'll bring up second down. And here comes play number six on this drive. They'll give it up to Forte. He takes us down to about the 12 for a gain of three. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. The Jets on third down, not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and seven. McCown going to hand this one off to Powell. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. They'll look at the clock. You're down two scores. Have to go for this, don't you? And they thought that as soon as they took over possession. It didn't matter where they were on the field. They were always going to be in four-down territory. Backed up in good situation. It didn't matter. So they've been preparing for that on their play sheet the entire time. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. They come up on a fourth down situation with things not looking particularly rosy. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Here we go. Green, 39. Green. Now McCown got to have this one. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Raider D, they get the football back. Well, they had to take one final shot at the end zone, but now things are looking really bleak. And I agree with that totally. You had to take the shot if they did score. You know, whether you call it a miracle or not, you line up, onside kick, get the ball back, throw one more in the end zone, who knows? Had to take the chance, it just was unsuccessful. And now Oakland ready to take the field. That one whistled against a big right tackle. You'd think being able to fire out and block, it'd be a lot easier to not commit a holding penalty, but it's tough to keep those guys right in front, isn't it? some room to get this up to about the 14. Now here's a timeout defensively. Defensive timeout called by the Jets. It's just there here in the final stages.
I'm ready now for second and nine. They'll keep pounding here with Lynch. And he's going to be taken down right at about the 15-yard line. Now the Jets are going to burn another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So now at third and seven, and defensively, it's a dime look, six DBs. Working from the gun, it's Carr. Well, he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds, so a big call there. That brings up fourth. The third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. Here's Marquette King now, standing just about on his own goal line. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. New York set to take the field. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going out offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a, a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks that, hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot it. McCown will try again on second down. And this time, he's got the hookup. It's complete. Not able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Jets move the chains. McCown going to throw. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by David Anderson. And he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. Turnover differential last year in the NFL. The bottom five teams you'd expect. Rams, Browns, the Jags, the Bears, and the Jets. Tied at minus 20. These Jets, they have to solve that QB situation. They, along with the other teams that you noted, they've got to get better play in that area because no team goes to the playoffs minus 20 in turnover differential. And now here come the Raiders. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. 
What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something. The Raiders likely going to get out of this with a victory as they take a knee. And with a third and 13 here, the defense in a dime look. down to a knee and that ought to just about do it. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Black Hole celebrates the Raiders are winners here as we say so long from Oakland.